Hey, what's up guys, it's Yui. Today we have the top five best poise breaking builds, stance breaking, posture breaking, whatever you wanna call it. We're doing those things today. Now, if you don't know what stance breaking is, it's basically when you stagger your opponent to the point where they're vulnerable to a critical attack or a post. Now, this is a very powerful mechanic, especially after the previous patch that did actually boost critical attack damage. So it's a good time to actually make this video. If you wanna know more of my builds, I have a whole dedicated playlist. I've already made dozens of builds already. But yeah, that out the way, let's just get into it. Starting off at number five, we have an Envoy's Longhorn build. Now this weapon is a great hammer and great hammers have some of the best poise damage in the entire game. They're second behind the Colossal weapons, but actually has a much better moveset. So these are actually already good at poise breaking themselves, but this one in particular is weapon skill Bubble Shower. For 16 FP, rains a whole bunch of bubbles from the sky and it actually does an enormous amount of damage and poise damage itself. If every single bubble does hit, it does 92 stance damage, which is beyond insane. So it performs really well against large bosses, but it still performs extremely well against even smaller enemies. Now this skill does actually scale primarily off faith, and this weapon does actually have a B scaling and faith, so that's where most of our points are actually going to go into. So being that we have a faith build, we might as well go have a bunch of different spells. Now you can use anything you want to, to just complement your build. If you want something specifically for poise breaking, I recommend the Crucible Incantations. Uh, tail and Horn are both good at poise breaking. Tail is probably the better one, but basically this weapon skill is going to be carrying most of the poise damage anyway, and you can just spam the charged heavy attacks if you did want to do that. As for the talismans, we're gonna have the dagger talisman because we're gonna have 20% more crit damage and we're actually gonna have the mystery cord on our offense. Now the mystery cord actually does have 140 crit multiplier. So it actually will end up doing more critical damage than our envoy's longhorn despite it actually having more AR. We're gonna have the sacred scorpion charm for more holy damage. We have the ritual sword talisman, the shard of Alexander, and we're also going to have the envoy's crown helmet. Now this helmet does actually boost the damage of your bubble skills by 15%, so that's obviously gonna benefit very greatly. As for our wondrous flask, we're gonna have the stone barb crack tier, which actually does boost our poise damage by 30% for 30 seconds. So you can just lead off the fight with your bubble shower weapon skill and poise break extremely quickly. We are actually going to have the Holy Tier on top of that, and for other spell buffs, we're going to have Golden Vow and Howl of Shiburi. Now, do use Howl of Shiburi carefully because it does actually decrease your damage negation by 30%, but yeah, basically the entire build is a spamming charged heavy attacks and spamming your weapon skill, and once you get a poise break, just switch to the Mystery Cord and get the repost. Number four, we have a build with the Dragon King's Cragblade. Now, this is a heavy thrusting sword, which they have amazing movesets, and they're pretty large weapons, so they get decent poise damage as well. Their charged heavy dax do just as much poise damage as a great axe, which obviously is really nice, but the best part about this weapon is its weapon skill, which is Thundercloud form, which for 28 FP, you turn into a cloud and literally get infinite hyper armor. Never gonna get staggered while you're in that cloud animation. Come crash into the ground to get a decent amount of damage. Now you can fully charge it to do even more damage and actually do a total of 72 stance damage, which is obviously amazing. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't actually work with things like the Godfrey's icon or the Millicent Prestesis, which is still fine because the poise damage more than enough makes up for it. Now this weapon only gets a strength and dexterity scaling, much better scale with dexterity so that's why we go all into dexterity basically gonna have the mystery cord in our offhand gonna have that kin infused because that is gonna be the best critical attack weapon in the entire game now we are gonna have it infused with the golden vow as well because that's just gonna be more damage and more defenses because no requirements for it so why not now alongside with that we're gonna have the dagger talisman for 20 percent more crit damage lightning scorpion charm Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander for more weapon skill damage, and in our flask we have the Lightning tier as well as the Stone Barbed Crack tier for 30% more poise damage for 30 seconds. Number three, we have a Star Fist build. Now this weapon is a fist-based weapon that does a whole bunch of stance damage with its heavy attack that comes out extremely quick. So it is gonna be like one of the better weapons in the entire game when you pair it alongside a heavy attack build. So we're gonna have this bad boy heavy infused with Crag Blades. Now Crag Blade does actually boost our physical attack damage by 15% and actually add 10% more stance damage as well. So our heavy attacks should be doing roughly around 35 to 36 more stance damage, which is really, really good. Now, and our offhand, we are gonna have Mystery Cord as well. We're gonna have that heavy infused with Golden Vow once again, because Golden Vow is gonna be more damage. But I wouldn't really use the Mystery Cord every single time to get the critical attack because switching off the Star Fist means that you're probably gonna lose the Crag Blade buff. So I'll probably leave it on for the most part. As for the stats that we're gonna have, it's pretty much just going all into strength, basically. Now we're gonna have a little bit of faith, so we can actually use Flame and Get Me Strength, because that would be a nice buff to pair alongside with that. And we are gonna have the Claw Mark Seal, because that scales very well the strength. And we're gonna have the Stone of Garank, which is a nice projectile to have, because obviously, being that this build is going to be lacking in range, having a projectile is always gonna be cool. And Stone of Garank does stagger pretty well into a decent amount of poise damage. Now, as for the armor set, we're gonna have the White Mask, which actually does give us more damage when you do proc bleed, because this weapon does actually do a little bit of blood loss build up, and you might as well just use the White Mask, because why not? It's only gonna be 45, and we're not gonna really use anything to buff it. With bleed, you can if you want to. If you wanted to use Blood Flame Blade, that could be an option. As for our talismans, though, we have the 
Lord of Blood Exaltation, which works the exact same way as the White Mask, basically. We have the Millicent Prestasis, which is more damage with successive attacks. We have the Ritual Sword Talisman, and we have the Axe Talisman for 10% more heavy attack damage. Now, in our Wondrous Floss, we also have the Spiked Crack Tube, which is basically the exact same as the Axe Talisman, does boost our heavy attack damage. And we have the Stone Barbed Crack Tube, which is going to be 30% more poise damage for an additional 30 seconds. But basically, the way this works is that you use Golden Vow, use Flame Green Strength, buff with Crag Blade, and then spam heavy attacks for days, and you'll be perfectly fine. At number two, we have an Ordovis's Greatsword build. Now, this is a strength-based weapon that does get a little bit of split holy damage, but it mainly does scale in that strength, and we're doing a lot more physical. And its weapon skill, Ordovis's Vortex, for 15 FP, does actually scale off AR, so you're just going to benefit going into strength a whole bunch. But... This skill itself, for 15 FP, you just do a whole bunch of damage really quickly, get a good high promo, does about 30 stance damage, but when you fully charge it, you can do 82 stance damage, get insane high promo, and just do a whole bunch of regular damage itself, which is absolutely insane, so we're just going to be spamming this thing for days. Now, we are going to use a little bit of spells as well, because this thing does actually get a C scaling and faith, and obviously we're going to benefit with things like Golden Vow and Flame Gummy Strength, so we're going to 27 faith. Now, the reason as to why we went into 27 faith is because the Crucible incantations have a minimum requirement of 27, and these actually do have some decent poise damage. Now, obviously, we're going to have the Claw Mark seal as well because that actually scales very well with strength, and we are going to have the entire Crucible set because it actually does boost our damage of the Crucible incantations by 2% each. Now, as for the Talismans, we're going to have the Erd Tree Favor plus 2, which is going to be more health, stamina, and equipment load. Going to have the Ritual Sword Talisman, which is 10% more damage at maximum health. Going to have the Godfrey's Icon and the Shard of Alexander to boost our weapon skill damage, especially when fully charged. As for our tier, we're going to have the Strength tier, which is going to be obviously just more damage. And we're going to have the Stone Barb Crack tier, which is 30% more poise damage for 30 seconds. But basically how this build works is just spamming the weapon skill. There's literally all that you need. You can have a couple of different types of incantations if we have projectiles for whatever reason, if you wanted to do that. But the weapon skill is just going to carry for the most part. At number one, we have a build using the Wing of Astel and the Mystery Cord in the offhand. Who would have thought that the best poise breaking build in the game would involve using a curve sword and a dagger, but yet here we are. So how this is actually working is that we have the Wing of Astel, which skill is Nebula. For 20 FP, this skill does a little AoE that does very good damage, has multiple parts to it as well, and it does 40 stance damage for every single of that little part. So you can actually do a whole bunch of stance damage with this weapon skill itself, but that doesn't even just end there because it's heavy attack, which is a projectile, when fully charged, it does 43 stance damage, which is literally higher than almost every colossal weapon in the entire game, except for the Great Club. That's just insane. Why does the Curve Sword get more stance damage? I don't really get that, but it's weapon skill and it's heavy attack are absolutely insane combo. Now this weapon does actually scale primarily off intelligence, so this build is gonna go all into intelligence. And on our offhand, we're gonna have the Mystery Cord, which once again is the highest critical weapon in the entire game. And we're gonna have this infused with Glint's Blade Phalanx. Now Glint's Blade Phalanx is an Ash of War of which just shreds enemies Poise meter because it does 40 stance damage as well. It's just absolutely insane. I don't know why this thing gets 40 stance damage. It's extremely quick. You can just use it before you even get into the fight. Once you engage, then just use the wing of Estelle and just poise break things incredibly quickly. And obviously, when you get the poise break, just switch back to the mystery cord to get the repost. Now, what else we're going to be using? We're going to have the dagger in our off hand, in our left hand, so we can actually have Golden Vow infused onto it because Golden Vow will just be more damage. We're going to have the whole spell blade set on because the Wing of Estelle weapon skill does actually get boosted by the spell blade set. As for our talismans, we're going to have the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Dagger Talisman for more crit damage, the Shard of Alexander for more weapon skill damage, and the Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% more damage at maximum health. Now, as for spells, just have stuff for variety. I like something for Frost, like the Glint at Ice Crag. You can have something for Fire. I like the Magma Shot and something for Physical like Rock Sling. You could use something like the Meteorite of Estelle or Comet Azur. Now we are going to have Terra Magicka as well because that's going to be just more damage when you're standing inside the pool of magic. Now as for our tiers, we're going to have the Intelligence and the Magic tier for just more damage. Now you can use the Stone Barb Crack tier if you wanted to, but it literally doesn't need it. You don't really need it. Now if you wanted to just poise break things quicker, go ahead, but you might as well just go all into damage because this is going to poise break quickly anyway. It literally doesn't even matter. It's just that insane. Anyway, that concludes that one. As always, please do like and subscribe because I will have some more videos coming along the way very shortly. And do follow me on Twitch because I am currently in the middle of doing a Souls Marathon where I complete every single game only using fist-based weapons. I just completed Dark Souls 1 and fist weapons absolutely suck. It's a terrible experience. You better move on to Dark Souls 2. So definitely do check me out on Twitch.